Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul Lutheran Church in Sarasota, Florida. We're working on my mic. It's great having you all here, those in person and those of you who are watching online. I'm Pastor Ashley Nichols. It is great to have you here and we're especially happy to have our baptismal family here. We're going to be baptizing Kevin and Palmer today. So we can all say hi to the Salvatores and friends and family. So we're so happy that you guys are here today. We want to we'll keep them in prayers, but we also want to keep John Puckhaber in prayer as he remains in the hospital um, and um, looking to get back into um, rehab after um, a, a fall. So continue prayers for John. And then Susan Burmaster is also in the hospital after a fall and looking to have some back surgery to um, help some of the vertebrae um, that have cracks in them. So continue to keep both John and Susan in prayer. Um, coming up on the 19th of May is Pentecost. And so we're going to have uh, some a lot of different kind of celebrations and um, for that day as it's the birthday of the church, baptism of the church. And so we could use some help with some um, assembly of some of our projects. And so Joanne Jordan is going to have a gathering um, at starting about 10 o'clock on Wednesday. So if you want to help put together some kind of crafts for the day, um, let uh, Joanne know and she can um, organize, she'll be organizing it and you can figure out exactly if it's at her house or um, here at the church or something. So if you're interested in helping put some crafts together um, on Wednesday morning, um, let Joanne know. Today we continue to celebrate our Raise the Roof, Raise the Kids campaign. So Pastor Don has a temple talk today. So thank you, Pastor Emeritus, Pastor Don. Good morning. Good morning. First of all, I'd like to greet my wife. She's still in Spain. She cannot fly home until May 15th. So good morning, sweetie. Well, actually, it's evening over there. Six hours difference. So, anyway. so thanks for your prayers for her and for all of us. Exciting day. We're going to have baptisms. This is truly a great day for, for your family and for the family of God to welcome you through baptism. Congratulations. Blessings to you. Speaking of Thanksgiving, this is my official Thanksgiving shirt and tie. You can't see it, but this tie, all the animals are exiting the ark. Now, you can just imagine how happy they were. Well, we're happy today because we're celebrating the accomplishment regarding Raise the Roof, Raise the Kids where we collectively as a community of faith have done wonders in supporting this program. And up on this slide here, you'll see, if you can see it up here, our goal was $665,425. As of today, with gifts we have received, 599000 $119.37 leaves us a balance of $66,305.63. And John, I wanted to thank you, your contribution that has been tremendous over these, this year plus. I notice your 28 cents now has gone up to 37 cents. So, thank you, John. been more than, certainly a lot more than that in your generosity. But this is our day of Thanksgiving, as I have said, it's a Thanksgiving day for the baptism. It's a Thanksgiving day for what we have done thus far. And it keeps us in mind that our goal was 665,000. We have not really reached that, but we're at 90%. And this means that the campaign will continue in the community and also uh, for members of the parish. Now, I figured this out, and uh, Rick and I, Rick Barry, oh, he follows me uh, this morning. Uh, 
I showed him the calculation. I figured this out, that if everyone uh, today and beyond those who are listening and observing on the program, on the back of this brochure, you can still make a pledge for a two-year period to get that balance of $66,305.37. If 12 people, if 12 people would pledge for a two-year period, over two years, $5,525.42, we'd reach the goal. But if 24 people would pledge $2,762.70, we would reach that goal. And if 36 people would pledge over a two-year period $1,841.80, we would reach that goal. It's unlimited what we can do. But today, we're celebrating what we have done thus far. So we thank God for your generosity, certainly members of the parish, but in the community, foundation, corporate gifts, and friends outside the parish. We are very grateful. This is an update. After this service, please, we're having a big celebration underneath the tents over here with a lot of refreshments. And so we hope you'll join us. God bless you. Thank you for your support and generosity. Thank you, Pastor Don. We've also started a fundraiser um, that is swag. So St. Paul swag has, so it has t-shirts and um, some coffee mugs, note cards, magnets, posters. We have some items there, some you sign up for. So they're all available during our party um, outside as well after worship. So Rick, you are up. Good morning. So we have six birthdays this week. Tuesday, it's J.D. Miller. Wednesday, it's Betty Masters. Thursday, it's Dorothy Bowler. And Friday, we have two, Kim Farrell and Janet Hepner. And on Saturday, it's Gail Hodge. So John, can you start us off with Happy Birthday? blessed day each and every day. Community Meals served 70 meals this past Tuesday, and the food pantry served 96 families yesterday, consisting of 186 individuals, which includes 22 children under 18 years of age. And a couple of the people, they were new to town, and they actually come from uh, where the war is. <laughs> trying to think of the name. Ukraine. Ukraine had come from the Ukraine. So they were had a translator with them and uh, they were able to get some groceries. So that was good to, a good community service for St. Paul to put out there. Um, <coughs> Pastor Ashley's e-blast this week is included in the messenger. And she shares some memories of Easter growing up in the upper Midwest especially those pertaining to a reflection story from the Gospel of John, Jesus the Gardener. There is more, so be sure to read it. Making Joyful Noise, watch this short and entertaining vlog on Sunday's worship music. I'm sorry, the last one was posted this week. Oh, no, we're done. Oh, sad day for St. Paul. A new one is not online every Thursday. Some ministry opportunities this week. I don't know if there's going to be Sunday school today in the fellowship hall, but uh, it's a normal Sunday thing. No Sunday school. No, okay. Community meal at 5.30 on Tuesday. Wednesday we have property at 8 a.m. And also on Wednesday, there, this Wednesday, there's no handbells, but there will be choir at 7. Uh, food pantry bagging on Thursday at 8, 9.30. Distribution on Saturday at 9 a.m. and 
Also on Thursday, St. Paul Prayer Zoom, titled Talking with God at 4 p.m. And now, <laughs> I went to the 30th reunion of my preschool. I didn't want to go because I put on like, a, like 100 pounds. <laughs> I was visiting my daughter the other night when I asked if I could borrow a newspaper. She said, Dad, this is the 21st century. I don't waste money on newspapers, but if you like, you can borrow my iPad. I can tell you this, that spider never knew what hit him. <laughs> <laughs> this one's for Pastor Don. Hello, Pastor Don. This is the Internal Revenue Service. Is Samuel Jones a member of your congregation? He is. Did he donate $10,000 to the church? He will. <laughs> Thank you, Rick. Any other announcements today? Yes. Go for it. Today, yesterday, was a very special day for a couple in our congregation. 1989, I first met John and Helen Miller in the hospital. Remember that, John, Helen? John was having a little procedure over there. And to yesterday, John and Helen Miller, good friends, pillars of St. Paul Lutheran Church, celebrated their 67th wedding anniversary. Congratulations. That was a good announcement, thank you. Anybody else have another good one? Or a not so good one, like Rick's jokes? Yeah. If not, we continue and we prepare our hearts and minds for worship with our prelude from our St. Paul Ringers. Thank you, St. Paul Ringers. Please rise today as we begin our fifth Sunday of Easter gathering hymn. It will be now the green blade rises, but I do have to give John some walking time to get from the bells over to the organ for him to be able to lead us in our singing. And we, so we continue celebrating this Easter.
congregation may be seated and this is the time for the baptismal family to come on forward to the baptismal font and sponsors come if a family wants to come closer they're welcome to you can take pictures during it we are very happy for everybody to be here Wonderful. Hello. How are you? Very good. So we will do some introductions. So we got Kevin here and Palmer, Brittany, Nick, Matt, Denise, Lenny, Emerson, and Taylor. Wonderful. We got family and friends. And so we're going to be baptizing Kevin and Palmer. Yes. So God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all in the baptized, all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. And so I present Kevin and Palmer for baptism. So Kevin, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to be baptized? If so, answer, I do. I do. Wonderful. And Brittany and Kevin, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have your child Palmer baptized into Christ? If so, answer together, I do. I do. And as you bring your child Palmer to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with Palmer among God's faithful people, to bring her to the word of God and the Holy Supper, Teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. Place in her hands the Holy Scripture and nurture her in faith and prayer. Proclaim Christ through word and deed. Care for others in the world God made and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help children? So both Palmer and Emerson grow in the Christian faith and life. If so, answer together, I do. I do. And now sponsors. Do you promise to nurture Kevin and Palmer in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit to help them live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? If so, answer together, I do. I do. Wonderful. And now, people of God, do you promise to support Kevin and Palmer and pray for them in their new life in Christ? If so, answer together, we do. We, we do. do. And so this is for everybody 
I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God and the powers of the world that rebel against God and the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, we answer together, I renounce them. I renounce them. And so we not only say what we don't believe in, now we go to what we do believe in, where we will confess the Apostles' Creed together in three parts. It's up on the screen if you don't have a bulletin handy or if your hands are full. So, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in God, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity. One God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. Look, here is water. What is to prevent us from giving thanks for baptism or even having a baptism? Immersed in the promises of this baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We rejoice with glad hearts giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. So this is the time for the baptism. So, Kevin, do you want to be first or Palmer? Sounds good. We can do that. So if you want to kind of just kind of dip her head a little bit in there, then I'm going to put this here so she doesn't get water in her eyes. Palmer, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes. Yeah. And then Kevin. I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Blessed be God, the source of all life, the word of salvation, the spirit of mercy. You belong to Christ in whom you have been baptized. Alleluia. So let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Kevin and sustain Palmer with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, 
the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. And we, yes, bless you. And we also pray for the parents and the sponsors. Oh God, the giver of life, look with kindness upon Brittany and Kevin, Palmer's parents, and Matthew and Nick, Palmer's godparents. Let them ever rejoice in the gift you have given them. Make them teachers and examples of righteousness for Palmer. Strengthen them in their own baptism as they share with Palmer the salvation you have given them through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so this is the time I like to do oil and we place a cross on both of your foreheads. Let's see, I can, right there is perfect, and I can come to her. Palmer, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. And Kevin, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. So then, so this is kind of like another birthday. And so on birthdays, we light candles. And so you get a candle for your baptismal birthday. And so you each get one. And we use light and candles because Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of your life. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ and to the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. And so a round of applause is very appropriate. And you can blow out your candles. And so those are yours to keep. And so on this day, every year, you can light it, have, a, have another baptismal birthday party, and that you have boxes that have all the dates on them. And you have gifts from the congregation, prayer shawls and blankets, and what I like to do always, I was a Beanie Baby collector um, back in the day, and so each, <laughs> so each baptism we have, my ears fall, each baptism we have, they, you get a part of my baby beanie baby collection and Emerson got, gets one too Aww. and so and some other gifts prayer shawls and books and ways to welcome you into God's family Thank you. and you're welcome to receive um, shake everybody's hands when we walk out and then you're also welcome to can do pictures after <laughs> You're welcome. Another round of applause is appropriate. And so we continue our celebration today. Not only a baptism, but a recognition of the Raise the Roof, Raise the Kids campaign. So Pastor Don will continue with that part. Again, congratulations on baptism. Blessings to you all. We follow this service that's printed in your bulletin as we recognize the Raise the Roof, Raise the Kids campaign for the preservation of a Victor Lundy building for the express purpose of serving children in our community with one of the finest educational programs in the area for preschoolers. We're grateful for that. Sisters and brothers, with joy, 
and with thanksgiving. We celebrate all that God has done through you, fellow members of St. Paul and the community for the Raise the Roof, Raise the Kids campaign. We celebrate the $599,119.37 already received toward this project and the work that has been completed thus far on the building. We put our trust in Christ Jesus for the rest of the needed funds and the completion of the project. Let us give thanks for God's gifts and pray for his continuing wisdom and guidance in the mission of Christ that we share. Let us pray together. Eternal God, you have brought us to a day of celebration in the life of St. Paul Congregation. You have accompanied us in times of excitement and success. You have guided us in our visions and plans for the project and campaign. And you have given us the joy of working together for the sake of the gospel. We rejoice in the campaign that has begun with trust in your promise, and we give thanks for all those whose courage, energy, and resources have contributed to its accomplishments as on this day of celebration. In the days ahead, use us and our gifts in various ways. Send forth renewed in the life of baptism so that we continue to live together as your faithful people carry out the ministry of word and sacrament, proclaim Christ in word and deed, serve all people in his name, and strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Through that same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. O oh God, you give us your Son as the vine, apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in this resurrection, that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We will continue with special music from our St. Paul singers.
Thank you. Does Emerson want to come up for a children's message? Want to come up here? You can look at all these stickers up here, because if you look in your bag, you're going to have some of these. If Palmer wants to come up, that's fine too. It's whatever. Hi there, Emerson. Hi. I love your shoes. They're shiny. They light up. My name's Prashley. It's so happy that you're here. That's okay. So what we did, but you were baptized before, and we just baptized your your little sister. And so today, our scripture, our Bible, talks all about a baptism that happens. And so when your mom and dad said, let's have a baptism on April 28th, I looked at the scripture and I said, that's perfect because the scripture is all about baptism. And so it says, Where, what would prevent me from being baptized? And the Holy Spirit said, nothing. And so I, can, we, can I bring some, can your dad lift you up here? So you can see all these stickers. Can you put your hand in the water? Can you do that? Just splash, splash, touch, splash. Touch, splash, splash. <laughs> Oop, touch. Trying to figure out what's happening. Can I put a cross on your forehead? Mm -hmm. Just like I did to your sister and your dad? Because Jesus loves you so very much. That's what that water reminds us of. And all these different ways that Jesus loves us. So he loves you so much. So we're going to say a prayer. So it's a repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God thank you, thank you for, Emerson for Emerson and Palmer and, Palmer and, Kevin, and, Brittany and Kevin and Brittany for this day, for this day and, for and for baptism, baptism and, all the ways and all the ways we live into our baptism. We live into our baptism. Be with us. I love you, Jesus. And I know you love me. And help me to tell everyone that you love them too. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yes. Good job. Yay. Thanks for coming up. It's great having you. We'll continue with our scripture readings today. Thank you, Carol, for being our scripture reader. The first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles, the eighth chapter. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship, and he was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb, silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, 
And both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Word of God, word of light. Thanks. Uh, a reading from Psalm 22. We will read it responsibly by verse. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall lead and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord, who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust, though they are dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They, sh they shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, the Lord has acted. The third reading is a reading from the first letter of John, the fourth chapter. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love, does not love, does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his lo love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have been seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as a Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears does not reach perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. But those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please rise as you're able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He makes every branch in me that bears no fruit, he removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. If you have already been cleansed, you have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. 
because apart from me you can do nothing whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers such branches are gathered thrown into the fire and burned if you abide in me and my words abide in you ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you my father is glorified by this that you bear much fruit and become my disciples the gospel of the Lord Praise Praise to you, o Christ you may be seated happy Easter Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We're still in the Easter season. But wow, it's been a month since Easter Sunday. And this, is, and this last month has been pretty amazing in the life of our congregation. You may not have noticed, but each week at the beginning of the service, we've done something different with the Thanksgiving for baptism. The Sunday after Easter, we remembered the promises we made in baptism to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, proclaim news of God in Christ, the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Then the next Sunday, we welcome new members who made these same promises. And last Sunday, we remembered our baptism with a sprinkling of water. And today, we had two baptisms and the recognition of Raise the Roof, Raise the Kids campaign. And on top of that, all the, the, the old beams from the education building in the front have been removed. And hopefully, next, pretty soon, we'll have the new beams going up. I've been pretty amazed at the Holy Spirit working at St. Paul through all of you. There are times when we need to step back and look and see what is being done and say, thank you, God, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Holy Spirit. And to me, that's what today is about. Our gospel story has Jesus saying to abide in him. To abide means, as one pastor wrote, to tarry, to stay, to cling, to remain, to depend, to rely, to last, to persevere, to commit, to continue, to tolerate, to endure, to acquiesce, to accept, to hang in there for the long haul, to make ourselves at home. It's both passive and active. When I was taking the Facebook live recording of the beams coming down, there was a moment that I can't explain well in words, but it was like the culmination of all that we have been trying to do together hit me. And all I could do was say thank you. And it wasn't just what we've been doing together with the Raise the Roof, Raise the Kids campaign, but everything we do together as a community of faith. As I was there recording under the big oak tree and all the branches and even looking at the painted tree on the education building, it was taking every single branch to produce this fruit together. We have been abiding in Jesus. I remember the conversation I had with the assistant to the bishop when I was asking her if I could be a possible match to St. Paul to be their pastor. As most of you know, I fell in love with St. Paul even before being here through hearing about the architecture. And I really appreciate ministry with folks who are retirement age and beyond r and beers, as I like to call them. And the assistant to the bishop knew that. But she also knew of the passion St. Paul had for youth and family. And none of my paperwork emphasized youth and family. I wasn't looking to be a youth pastor. I didn't want to highlight youth as a priority because being younger and female, I could then be pigeonholed into only that type of ministry. So the assistant said, it could be a match. They are an older congregation, but they want to have kids and family in their midst again. It's a priority of theirs. Are you still interested? And I, of course, said yes. 
and the rest is history. But that conversation has never left me. A priority of youth and family, that has never changed. We've taken on the great endeavor with replacing the roof and beams on the education building for our early childhood learning center. We have a lot to be proud of as a congregation. But we know that we don't just want kids in the school, but also in worship. And that has grown too. I remember when I first got here, we didn't put in the bulletin a children's message because it was rare that we had kids in worship. Now it's rare when we don't. And I think I received one of the best compliments from the family here that have been baptized today. So Palmer, six months old, and her dad, Kevin. Brittany, the mom and wife, she called a church on a Friday to inquire about worship and baptism. And Tracy, our administrator, took the message since I'm not in the office normally on Friday. And then I texted Brittany the next Monday and said I was returning her call. She got back to me and said, my family has been looking for a new church that's family friendly. We've been listening at home and we wanted to start trying to come in person. I had to reread that text to make sure she was really calling us a family friendly church and not just looking for one. I actually couldn't believe it and I think I even double checked and said, I have, have you, are you been watching online? So knowing that she would be familiar with us and she said yes. To hear that we are considered a family friendly church made by weak and I still smile and couldn't wait to share that story with everyone. And the idea of a family we had no one, no idea watching online, that was pretty cool too. So I don't want to put a lot of pressure on you all, but you, I hope we're still a family-friendly congregation well, now that you're here in person, because you have really made a wonderful impression on me. And we thanks, thank you for, thank God for you. But I probably shouldn't have been surprised because we are a family-friendly church. When I told this story to someone, they kind of looked at me like, well, of course you are. But still hearing it from a family who didn't know us and our priorities, but could just see them by just watching online was pretty amazing to me. And it felt like the work of the Holy Spirit saying, keep abiding in Jesus more branches and more fruit will continue to be produced. The Father is glorified by this. Today was to be a day to say thanks be to God for the Raise the Roof, Raise the Kids campaign, but it has multiplied to also saying thanks be to God for two new members of the body of Christ and a way we can continue to know that the Holy Spirit is active at St. Paul and Jesus is smiling as we continue to live out our faith together. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. I always like to make sure we have something to take home with after my message, a reflection question. And so today, it's the idea, this was a recent story of mine about seeing Jesus smiling. What is your story of how you've seen Jesus smile lately? And who can you tell? We continue with our hymn of the day. This is the Spirit's entry now.
rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. We pray for the church around the world, for all ministers, and all the mission of the gospel. Be all regularly baptized and confirmed in your care. Cleanse our hearts with your word and help us to abide in you always. God of grace, hear our prayer. For the well-being of the earth and all created things, for rivers and lakes, streams and estuaries, melting glaciers and polluted waters. Renew the face of the earth and shower us with your goodness. God of grace, hear our prayer. For the, for the nations and all those in authority, for global, state, and national leaders, for elected representatives at every level, and for international organizations, that justice and peace may reign. God of grace, hear our prayer. For all those in need, for any experiencing homelessness or unemployment, for those fleeing from oppression or seeking asylum, and for all who are ill or suffering, be especially with those we now name aloud or in our hearts. We pray for those on our prayer chain, for the names listed in the bulletin this morning, in thanksgiving for, Ed, for Palmer and for Kevin, for the prayers upon the community prayer cross, for healthcare workers and law enforcement officers, for Ukraine, for the Middle East, for all victims of human and natural disasters, for St. Paul members, especially Carol Grush, Evelyn Gullickson, Ayla and Aaron Guatney, Barbara Hahn and Ethel Hamilton, for our preschool teachers and students, especially Hunter, Finley, Juliet, Weston, Zoe, Deborah, Roman, Miss BJ, and Miss Christie. God of grace, hear our prayer. For this congregation, for the caring ministries of this faith community, for all who visit and minister to one another, for all who take communion to homes or care centers, and for all who seek to share your love with the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. With thanksgiving for the saints who rest from their labors, help us, like them, to bear much fruit and to become your disciples. And at the last, bring us to that heavenly banquet where all will feast together at your table. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please take some time to share God's peace with one another as we turn our hands into hearts. We don't pass the offering plates but they are available to you as you enter or leave the sanctuary. We also have online giving through our website, especially for those of you who are watching online. And this is a time our ushers are bringing forward the offering and we'll continue with the offering prayer. Let us pray. Risen One, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. Amen. 
We continue with our spiritual communion prayer for those of you who are online and cannot physically eat or drink of Jesus' body and blood. Let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. This is a time for those of you who like Holy Communion at your seats to lift up your elements for blessing in consecration. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come and eat at Jesus' table. Thanks be to God. This is a time for those of you who'd like Holy Communion at your seats, that you take the host wafer, that this is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. Then the wine or the juice, the blood of Christ shed for you, take and drink. And then those like to come up to the altar to receive Holy Communion. Remember, this is the Lord's table. All who believe in Jesus are welcome. And you can come forward at the usher's instruction.
Please rise as you are able. Now may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, the spirit of Easter hope, bless you now and always. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn today is Let All Things Now Living. go in peace. Rejoice and be glad. Thanks be to God. And all God's children say, Amen. Yes.